वेलकम अगेन टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट विद सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ अवर हिस्ट्री थर्ड चैप्टर दिल्ली सुल्तान स्टूडेंट एज यू नो दैट सो मैनी सुल्तान रूल्ड ओवर दिल्ली बट द दिल्ली गॉट मोर इम्पोर्टेंस एंड इट बिकम द कमर्शियल सेंटर इन वेन द टोमस एंड द चौहान स्टार्टेड देयर रूल्स एंड इन देयर रूल दिल्ली गॉड्स मोर इम्पोर्टेंस according to a commercial place okay and some coin that started minting here that were called dehli wala okay and that uh, these coins dehli wala were uh, very wide circulation they had very wide circulation and they were very important uh, they were very important at that time look at the map one you also know that dilli sultan built many cities in that areas that we know with that we now know as delhi so look at this map and here you can see delhi e kunha shiri and jahan pana these are some main cities built by the delhi sultans okay there is also a table in your book in table 1 okay and you have to make this table in your notebook also so in this table you can see the name of those sultans who ruled over the delhi and they also established some dynasties and these dynasties uh, makes lots of impacts on delhi in today's class you will learn about the different rulers of the delhi from 12th century to 15th century okay so student our capital delhi has a long history and people has continued inhabited delhi since the 6th century and they were living here and the delhi were a very important place from that time also now it is the capital of our country and still it is very still it take a very important place in the world so delhi sultan okay so delhi was very important and however it did not become the major city until the 12th century why why it didn't become a main city in 12th century but after the 12th century during the 12th century and the chauhan conquered the city of delhi and transformed it into an important commercial center okay and in 1192 with the defeated of prithviraj chauhan delhi again changed hand and now for the first time it came under muslim rule muslim rule established by mohammad gauri in 1206 Gauri appointed one of his generals Qutbuddin Abbas as the governor of Delhi. Thus was established the first Muslim dynasty in the Indian subcontinent at Delhi. It was called the Mamluk dynasty or the earlier Turkish dynasty written in your book but it is also known as the Mamluk dynasty. From 1206 to 1500 26 Delhi was ruled by many rulers of Muslim dynasty and they are preferred to title of sultan and so his the period of history came to be known as Delhi Sultanate you know that there are lots of medium to find about the history although inscription coins and architecture period a lots of information uh, these Uh, architecture provides a lots of information especially valuable are histories first of all those people who writes the important points and the important topics of at that place were known as the tarikh or tawarikh like in today some people writes news and uh, some news channel also broadcast news to us but at that time the social media was not very popular and it was not invented at that time so uh, some people used to write history and it was written in persian the language of administration under the delhi sultan so uh, there was a step of writing the history of delhi was that some first of all there were two step so first of all they have to make the paper so four stage in the making of a manuscript first preparing a pa- paper and be writing the text melting gold to highlight important words and passages and preparing the binding they have to bind the books also 
but the authors of swariks were learned men secretaries and the administration poet and courtiers who both recounted events and advised rulers on governors emphasizing the importance of just rule so they were writing only about the important people not about the common people there's a box here that is a circle of justice okay what was the circle of justice at that time fakri mudabir wrote in the 13th century a king cannot survive without soldier means uh, king needs soldiers and soldiers cannot live without without salaries and salaries come from the revenue collected from peasants but peasants can pay revenue only when they are prosperous and happy this happen when the king promote justice and honest government means what was the role of the king at that time you can see in this box and in this note what was the re- role of king at that time okay kings provide the justice for the people and if fair justice was there so before reading the history you have to keep some things in your mind like first the author of swarik lived in cities not in villages and hardly ever in villages and they often wrote their histories for sultan only in hope of rich reward okay and these authors devised rule on the need of the, pre, the need of, need to preserve an ideal social order they just want to preserve an ideal social order if anything happen bad and if injustice were happening there they will n- never write it because then if they will write about the uh, critics of the king then they will not get any reward so they only write to make kings happy okay because they want rewards so you will be not able to see any critics in their writings in of any critics about the kings in their writing okay so the offer advised rulers on the need to preserve an ideal social order based on birth right and gender distinction the ideas were not shared by everybody okay means birth right and de- gender distinction the society was very influenced by the men only okay and the birth right birth right means privileges claimed on account of birth for example people believe that noble inhabit inherited their rights to govern because they were born in certain families so student as i am telling you that the the sultan preferred to give them title of sultan and so this period of history came to be known as delhi sultanate it started with the mumluk dynasty early turkish rulers okay and followed by the khilji tughlaqs sayyids and lodi dynasty okay students these are some important dynasties and the qutubuddin abak his son in law shamsuddin abak il tutmish took over the throne of delhi il tutmish passed on the region of delhi to his daughter razia sultan as she was more capable than his son she was the only woman ruler from the delhi sultanate ruled delhi in 1266 after razia balban the chief advisor of gayas of razia's brother ruled delhi he was the last of the mamluk dynasty after his death in 1827 delhi was ruled by under the control of khilji dynasty the first ruler from the khilji dynasty was jalaluddin khilji and he uh, his minister who influenced many ruler of the following generation means the rule of khilji influenced many rulers okay in 1316 the death of alauddin khilji brought the end of the khilji dynasty and the tughlaq dynasty come next and ghayasuddin tughlaq was the first emperor of tughlaq dynasty he ruled over delhi till 1300 ad 25 ad his successor was muhammad bin tughlaq in 1315 ad he died and then tughlaq becomes the next ruler and the and then after that the tughlaq become the next ruler and after his death the tughlaq dynasty become very big and taimur become the ruler in 13 98 taimur from central asia attacked india to as to loot 
and to blunder it, Delhi. Delhi was ruined after his attack. He appointed Khazar Khan as the governor of the Multan and Sindh. And felt India later, Khazar Khan founded the Sayyid dynasty, which ruled over Delhi from 1414 to 1415 AD. After his death, in 1421, the rule of Sayyid dynasty was taken over by Mubarak Shah. And after his death, the dynasty didn't lost land. And Balbun Lodi established Lodi dynasty. In 1451, after his death, his son Sikandar Lodi took over the land of Delhi and shifted his capital to Agra. He was succeeded by Ibrahim Lodi by 1517 but was unable to gain the support of other Khan nobles who supported uh, fighting against Ibrahim. For power, finally Dalat Khan Lodi, the governor of Punjab and his uncle of and the uncle of Ibrahim invited Babur to invade India in 1526. Babur defeated Ibrahim Lodi in first battle of Panipat and founded the Mughal Empire. In India, it was the end of Lodi dynasty and then the Mughal dynasty and the Mughal Empire begin their reason and they begin their rule in India. So students, now we will read the important point of this table means how these sultans started their rules. Delhi became the capital city after the establishment of the Delhi Sultan in the 13th century. Okay, and after that, when Delhi became uh, the city, after that, the Delhi Sultan consisted of five dynasties, namely the Mumluk, Khilji, Tughlaq, Sayyid, and Lodi dynasties. So these were some important dynasties and important points of this chapter and you have to understand the time period of this dynasty and the name like Mumluk means early, early Turkish dynasty, Khilji, Tughlaq, Sayyid and Lodi dynasty. And students you know that Rizya Sultan was the first woman ruler who ruled over Delhi. But Minhaji Siraj thought that the queen's rule went against the ideal social order created by God because at that time people think that only man can rule on a place in which women were supposed to be subordinate to men. He therefore asked in the register of God creation. Since her account didn't fall under the column of man, how did she gain from all of her excellent qualities? On her inscription and coins, Rajya mentioned that she was the daughter of Sultan il Turkish, and this was in contrast of the queen Rudram Devi 1262 to 1289. In the, in the Kakatiya dynasty of Rangal, part of modern Andhra Pradesh, Rudram Devi changed her name on her inscription and pretended she was a man. Another queen, Vida, ruled in Kashmir. Her title is interesting. It comes from Didi word or elder sister, an obviously affectionate term given to a loved ruler by, the, by her subject. So you can understand that what was the thinking of the people at that time. <clears throat> From garrison town to empire, the expansion of Delhi Sultan. Now we will read about it. Two words are very important here for you to understand. That first one is hinterland and garrison town. Every Sultan who ruled, who ruled over Delhi want to control these two places. That is hinterland and garrison town. In the early 13th century, the control of the Delhi Sultan really went beyond heavily fortified town occupied by garrison. Means garrison was that town, a fortified settlement with soldiers. And hinterland the land adjacent to a city or port that supply it with goods and services. Because these towns were a commercial center and these towns were a very fortified settlement. Means only this place was for the soldiers and if anybody control this place means they can control the whole army and they have a much power for rule so in the earliest century the control of Delhi sultan really went beyond heavily fortified towns occupied by garrison and the sultan seldom controlled the hinterland of the cities and were therefore depended upon trade tribute or plunder of supplies Controlling garrison town is distant Bengal and Sindh from Delhi was extremely difficult. 
rebellion war even bad weather could snap frigil communication route delhi authorities were also changed by mughal invasion from afghanistan and by governor who rebelled at any sign of the sultan's weakness the sultan barely survived these challenge and if consolidate occurred during the reign of qiyasuddin balban and further expansion under alauddin khilji here student in this map you can see the area where these sultan ruled means from the kajakot multan lach here you can see these places mandana and tabrind shushuti mandur ranthambhor banaras awadh and lakhnoti there are some places where the mughal uh, ruled where the mughal ruled over okay so you have to draw this map in your notebook also <coughs> the second expansion of the external frontier of the sultan military expedition into southern india started during the reign of alauddin khilji means alauddin khilji started to increase the milis uh, to increase his mini military and that's why military expansion is also increased and the and the tughlaq in their campaign sultan armies captured elephant horse and slaves and carried away precious metals by the end of muhammad tughlaq's reign 150 years after a somewhat humble beginning the armies of the delhi sultan had marched across the large part of the subcontinent and they had defeated rival armies and seized cities the sultan collected taxes from the peasantry and dispensed justice in its realm but how complete the effective was its control over such a vast territory means student these moguls some moguls came to uh, to establish here but some just want to loot the important materials and important metal from here they just want to take the property and then they went away so uh, here in this picture you can see there is a place and quwwat al islam mosque and minaret built during the last decade of the 12th century this was the congressional mosque of the first city built by the delhi sultan described in the chronicles of delhi e kunha the old city the mosque was enlarged and ezutmish and alauddin khilji the minar was built by two sultans kutubuddin ebak and ultutmish you can see here the kutub minar also that is in delhi kutub minar okay so uh, they uh, the kutub minar and the places around that was built by some uh, that quwwat al islam mosque that is in delhi also near the kutub minar this is a, sh a small mosque that is called the quwwat al islam mosque and minaret that minaret is that is the kutub Mi kutub minar during the last decade of the 12th century and this was the congregational mosque of the first city built by the delhi sultans described in the chronicle of delhi e kunha and the mosque was enlarged by iltutmish then iltutmish enlarged it and the alauddin khilji the minar was built by two sultans to ye jo minar thi pehle bahut choti thi but after that two sultan of no, increase the length of this minar and the minar was built by two sultan kutubuddin ebak and iltutmish the masjid what is masjid a mosque is called a masjid in arabic literally a place where muslim prostrate in reverence to allah in a congregational mosque masjid e jami or jama masjid muslim read their prayers namaz together okay these are the some uh, mosque in the in delhi that is jama masjid member of the congregation those the most respected learned male in their leader imam for the ritual of prayers he also delivered the saraman kutub during the friday prayer during prayer muslim stand facing makka in india and this is to the west this is called the kaaba <coughs> the delhi sultan built several mosques in cities all over the subcontinent and these demonstrated their claim to be protectors of islam and muslim mosques also had to create the sense of a community of believers who shared <coughs> a belief system and a code of conduct it was necessary to uh, reinforce the idea of a community become muslim more from a variety of background if we 
you take a closer look to the administra administration of at that place, then you will see that consolid consolidation under the Khaljis and Tughlaq. The consolidation of a king as vast as the Delhi Sultan needed reliable governors and administration rather than appointed aristocrats and landed chief landed chieftains as governors. The early Delhi Sultan especially El Sismis favoured their special slave purchased for military service called Bandagan in Persian. Okay. Bandagan here student is a Persian word. Sultan used to buy some slaves and then they uh, give them some important power. They give them importance for the military purpose and they were carefully trained to man some of the most important political officer in the kingdom. Since they were totally depended upon their master, the Sultan could trust and rely upon them. Slaves rather than son. The Sultan were advised. A slave whom one has brought up and and promoted must be looked after for it. It need a whole lifetime and good luck to find a worthy and experienced slave. Wise men have said that a worthy and experienced slave is better than a son. Then you can think that uh, any reason why a slave could be better than a son. Okay, because sometimes uh, the real children and the real son uh, couldn't do something for their uh, parents and for their rulers as uh, these slaves were doing for their ruler. So the Khiljis and Tughlaqs continued to use Bandagan and also raised people of humble birth who were often their clients to high political position. They were appointed as generals and governors. However, this also introduced an element of political instability. Slaves and clients were loyal to their masters and patrons, but not of their hires. Now, sultans had their own servants. As a result, the occasion of a new monarch often saw conflict between the old and the new nobility, and the patrons of these humble people by the Delhi Sultan also shocked many elites and the authors of Persian Tawarik. So, uh, these Tawarik criticized the Delhi Sultan for appointing the law and base form for higher offices. <clears throat> like officials of Sultan Muhammad Tughlaq. Sultan Muhammad Tughlaq appointed Aziz Kumar, a wine uh, distiller, Fizur, Fizur Hazam, a barber, Manka Tabaka, a cook, and two gardeners. Ladha and Pira to high administrative post. Jiyadin Barani, a mid 14th century chronicler, reported their appointments as a sign of Sultan's laws of political judgment and the, the, in, the incapacity of to rule. Why do you think Barani criticized the Sultan? Because Sultan were giving important posts to some low caste people. That's why Barani was criticizing the Sultan. Okay, so he was criticizing the Muhammad Tughlaq. Student, we will read the next points of this chapter in next video and in next class also.